Good evening, everybody. We have a special guest, and I'm here to uh, take place of Auntie Donetta. So this is a new uh, new thing. So CDPD, we have Creative Educator. It's all about clout. So a little bit about our person that's going to be presenting today is Clarletta Hurt. All right, she is an educator, producer, and youth advocate, uh, advocator. I right, with over two decades of experience in education supporting girls of color. She is an award-winning film produ uh, producer and former broad pre uh, presenter, I mean, president for Women in Film and Video in DC. Coletta has worked as a teacher, administrator, and currently works as a school counselor in Washington, DC. Coletta is pursuing her doctorate degree Premiering her documentary, Closed Minds, launching a coaching platform for Black girls as a 2021 initiative of broadcast scholars and facilitating social justice conversations with teens as a 2021 Vocal Justice Fellowship and Fellow. Her youth development company, In the Loop Program of Success, is re revamping programs to relaunch in September 2021. Carletta is passionate about all things for black girls and women literature, literature. Oh. Literature and educational equilibrium. Her greatest project to date is her very active son, William. So we have Carlette. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Th thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Yes. It is beautiful to have you today. And I'm glad that you are here today to give us some of these great gems and everything else that you have. I just want to have your autograph because you are a winner. I mean, you're a producer and everything else. So yes, I'm very excited. So people at home, I hope you have your pen and paper ready so you can jot down some notes and learn from this, this young lady here. All right, so it's all you. Thank you, Daryl. Um, I guess we can make the put the presentation up. I guess if it's up. Um, all right. So um, as Daryl said, I am Carletta S. Hurt. I'm thankful for being here. A little bit about who I am. Okay, it's not moving. Um, all right. Let me see. If I can... Well, I'll start. I'm Carlisle Hurt. I'm actually from Georgia originally um, and have been living in D.C. for over 10 years. I'm also a mother, as he said, of an amazing young man named William. I've been in education for over 20 years, actually. And I've also um, been in okay, uh, video and filmmaking for over 15 years. I can't advance, though, so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about like my journey as a creative educator. Um, and I, I say clout because it's one of those, you know, famous terms used by Cardi B and other entertainers uh, about how they, you know, are using their brand, explaining what they do. And so I took a twist on it as an educator to kind of show. Oh. Hey, Carletta, I removed it to give you a moment to figure out why you're not able to advance your slides. So you want to play with that for a moment and then I'll put it back on the screen. Just let me know when you're ready for me to put it back on the screen. I'll put it back on, okay? I don't, I still don't know how to advance it though. It's like still it's, not letting you advance it. Maybe you can close it and open it back up. It's not showing up on my side. Um, I took it off of the screen. So it's not sharing. You can just go to your actual presentation and open your presentation guys give us a moment you know we always have tech issues here cdpd uh it's okay it's all right so yeah it's not on the screen i'm not sharing it at all you can just at the point where you're ready to share it again just let me know and i'll put you back up there so guys um this evening carletta wants to have her um are you able to advance through it yep. okay all right she'd like to have her questions at the end so hold your questions to the end i'm going to get myself off of this screen all right miss hurt here you go Technology, you gotta love it. So I'm Carlena, Georgia born and DC living, um, mother of William, school counselor, educator, 
producer, um, future author, books coming out later this year. I'm a self-proclaimed wordsmith champion, Sudoku, Scrabble, words with friends. You know, I got you. Don't come for me. Um, I also make a mean sweet potato pie from scratch. I actually bake my sweet potatoes. I mash them up. It is amazing. So once the world opens back up, I invite you over to have a piece. Um, it's a little bit about me um, and who I am. So clout. Um, the first C. Oh, so if you're not allowed to make mistakes, you're not allowed to grow. Um, and Shaka Pilgrim is a young lady who works in film and television. And I really like this quote um, for myself and for my students. Because we have to uh, give ourselves some grace. Uh, we learned through COVID, things can just happen and take us off kilter. So this quote really resonates in a lot of different ways. But if you're not allowed to make mistakes, you're not allowed to grow. And we're going to start off with our first letter, which is C. C is for create, creative and character. Um, and I've learned a lot in the last um, some years that I've been living that being creative um, and being also having high character is important. So when people lack faith in your ability question your commitment, plot to undermine your efforts, or simply dislike you. You get creative in navigating that space and your character must rise above the madness. Um, and one thing when I was talking to Jeanette about making this presentation, and adversity has affected a lot of us, right? Things have happened and we sometimes, when these things, when people lack, our, when people lack faith in us, we begin to doubt ourselves, question our own abilities, and that can sometimes take us off tilter. So it's really important that you begin to see how you can navigate those spaces in a creative and positive way where your character shines through and people can see you for what you really are and not the madness kind of going on around you. So one thing I've learned in, I'm 45, I'm doing my 45 know them a year, is that you can't really get caught up in those small things. Um, and there's a book called The Four Agreements that really focuses on how you have to like just not allow others issues and agendas to impact you. And I will say when I first um, got into like, you know, I got older and I was doing my things, I, I didn't feel like I was very creative. I was like, I don't offer anything, I don't paint, I don't draw. And creativity isn't just in those things. It can be a lot of different things. Like I'm a very, I'm a visionary. If you bring, bring me an idea, I give you five things off of that. So it's really important, again, don't let other people's ideas of you kind of impact who you are and stop your creativity and also begin to impact your character. Um, another thing about this is that L is for love and leadership. Um, and we all want to be loved and, and being a leader isn't about having a title. That's one thing I think John Maxwell says a lot about leadership can come from wherever you are. And so for me, i the heartbeat of who I am has been in my work and I've been an educator for a long time. Um, and I started off pursuing an undergraduate in accounting because I love math. Accounting is not math. And I found out very quickly, but I was doing a lot. Like I said, I love math. I want to be exposed to this. I want to let others love math too. And that's how I got my way into education. So knowing what your love is, and it doesn't come automatically. It may take some time, but the, the, the famous quote my mentor always says, um, what, do what you love and it won't feel like work, right? And so that's what you have to do, find out what, what that love is for you. And, and I found that in education. Also, one thing I learned... Um, when I became a mother, is that different kind of love, right? Um, I was a teacher, educator, administrator before I had my son. And I always said, all these children are my children, you know? Um, and it went, until I had my own, I recognized what that actually means. And while I do believe educators and doctors and physicians who don't have children can still give parents and young people what they need, having that experience definitely does change the game. And I said, there's no hood like motherhood um, and a journey that I could have never imagined. And also in being very transparent, the fear of raising a black man in America. Um, and while he is only four, there are so many things happening now that are going to be that, gonna, that will impact him when he gets older and I have to be very cognizant of that. So I think in being um, a creative educator, what kind of space do I want him to grow up in? What do I want him to learn as early as pre-K three, pre-K four? those are all going to make an impression upon him. So I think it's important that we we think long-term when it comes to how education and people around our young people will impact them long-term. It's not just, oh, well, she just met him. It's not going to be a big deal. But those seeds are planted early. I call him my seed because everything I put into him is going to grow into something. 
and I want that fruit to be um, prosperous and 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 um, positive for him and the environment. So those things do matter early on. Um, also, when you think about clout, um, I love Audrey Lord. Like I love her. And this quote says, "Once we recognize what it is we are feeling, once we recognize when we can feel deeply, love deeply, can feel joy, it will demand that all parts of our lives produce that kind of joy." And when you have clout, that L, when you can embrace love, you can embrace leadership, and you know those things, it does make a difference in everything around you. So again, leadership isn't about being president or vice president, having a nice fancy title. It's about you having the confidence and the belief in your ability, and others believe you too, because leadership can happen at any stage of an organization. Ask the janitor <laughs> of a building. Um, and then leadership. So one thing... Uh, when I was putting a pre presentation together, I said, how can I explain leadership? Um, and so I decided to do a collage of pictures and how, so for me, leadership has been a variety of things. My production company, I can productions. I started off as a PA production assistant, the lowest like ring on the totem pole when it comes to productions. Cause I didn't know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And people saw in me things I didn't see in myself. And I was quickly able to gain um, other positions, other opportunities, because I was exhibiting those signs of a leader, even as a PA, when I was just going to get coffee, wrangling extras. But again, if leadership is not about a position, it's about how you embrace your current situation. Um, also, Love Girls Magazine. I found it through an email I got at work, and I was just really impressed. Her name was Jasmine. Jasmine is amazing. And she started this Mr. Magazine because her friend was getting bullied and she wanted to show her how to embrace who she was and not listen to others. And so I became the DC um, editor of the magazine. I, I called her up. I sent her an email. We had a conversation I'm like, well, I don't know. We're just here in Iowa. It's going great. And I was like, no, this could be a national publication. It has legs. And today she has three different um, areas that still an uh, issue here in DC. And the picture, right, the picture right below Love Girls Magazine was our first award ceremony. And we wanted to recognize leadership in young black girls in this area. And so you see those um, five girls we recognize um, in different areas of leadership. So to me, leadership is also about pouring that into other people, especially young people. Um, and then we're in the loop program of success. I've had this company now, wow, um, over 20 years, I believe. And we do a leadership institute. That's one thing we did every summer consistently. Because again, believing in leaders isn't about just taking it off for myself and being selfish, but also knowing that to be a leader takes, you know, education, it takes practice, it takes opportunity. And that's what we did with In the Loop. Um, also, um, again, my young people theme, Leaders of Tomorrow, the National Black NBA Association. I've been a proud member for over a decade. I've been a DC chapter member for over four years. And I ran the LOT program, the Leaders of Tomorrow. And it's basically about young people, giving them the opportunity to be exposed to public speaking, financial literacy, college and career preparedness, as well as um, skill development, from resume to interviewing skills, to giving, the, being, exposing them to as much, as much as possible to build their repertoire as not just students, but just as adults, as individuals, building really amazing young people to be awesome adults. Um, and then the last two pictures, the one, in the bottom right, my left, um, I started the DC School Council Association with two amazing black women, um, Lindsay and Duffy. And we were the first two years going through the trials of getting members, trying to have a conference. Our leadership shined through and we shared that leadership. We were very um, e non-egocentric. Uh, we loved on each other. We supported each other. Um, and we grew a lot, you know, it was an amazing experience and I still consider them you know, friends to this day and we still keep in touch. And then the last one, um, is my current position, you know, is COVID and as a school counselor, I'm always excited for my students when they graduate. And this young lady, um, her name is Monica and she came to us, she had a child and she was behind and she wanted to get back on track and graduate on time. And she got pregnant during this time frame. And she got very discouraged and we just really poured into her and we helped her. And she actually spoke at our graduation and she was so nervous. But when we asked her, she first thing she said was, no, I'm not going to do it. Nope. Mm -mm. And we were like, why not? And she's like, what am I going to say? You know, who wants to listen to me? 
and we told her who would want to listen to you you've had two children while in high school and you're graduating you know a lot of people can't say that and so we really spent a lot of time and for her leadership seems to like a far thing right like it wasn't something she could feel like she could even reach but she was a leader even for her two her, her two sons showing them what happens when you adversity strikes and you pick yourself up and you keep going and she was able to graduate and now she is thinking about college she had never thought about college before and we show her like you are a leader your story matters your voice matters i think it's really important when you think about clout it's not about just keeping things for yourself you want to get clout right because it means your presence and prestige but how do you share that with others and give them clout as well so that's leadership on my view of leadership and how um i've used it has it how it's impacted me and then oh opportunity organization and for a long time i was like and i was thinking what we could oh like, like oh was like a, one of those harder to think about words and so opportunity and organization came to mind when i think about what i've been through and so with opportunity comes exposure i'm really big on exposure and opportunities experiences and finding safe ways to gain knowledge um growing up as a black girl in georgia finding safe ways to gain knowledge you know <laughs> it was a little bit tricky but I was blessed. I was extremely fortunate to have an amazing mentor and also my family. My family was a great resource, very open to having me do things. My mother and would tell you I was always into something after school, but very supportive of that. And then being open to opportunities. Like that was me when I saw them, ooh, I'm gonna try this. Ooh, I'm gonna try that, even now. Um, and mentorship plays a key role. If you're not a mentor, consider being one because ha me having a mentor gave me so many opportunities um and one of them was like my first plane trip my first time away from home for more than two days like my first major award like my mentor pushed me into those places and so it's important that when you think about how can i not just give back but how can i work on myself like mentorship plays a good big part but exposing yourself to those opportunities as well and i think for our young people it's important that we push them out of their comfort zone because there's nothing safe there. You know, you're not gonna grow. Um, and then, of course, love me some Michelle Obama. Um, when you've worked hard and done well and walked through that door of opportunity, you do not slam it shut behind you. You reach back, you give other folks the same chance that help you succeed. And that's also what opportunity means, right? It means that you're not going to just take this opportunity for yourself. You're gonna bring others with you. And I do that a lot. I do my best to make sure I engage people, I share resources. Like I've learned that that's what other people do, right? Other cultures, they share, they, they have this very much community mindset. And I want to create that same community with the folks I, I, I engage with. I think it's important that the pie is big enough for all of us. Like what's meant for you is for you. What's meant for me is for me. I can't take anything that belongs to you. So that opportunity that was presented to, to Carletta, I can share that because you know why? I know whatever the opportunity is, it's still going to be for me, even if I share it with you. I think sometimes we miss that boat. I want to keep everything to ourselves and not share. But it's really important we understand that what is meant for us is always going to be ours. And nobody can take that from us. Now, you or I can mess up for myself, but nobody's going to take it. And we have full ownership and control over that. So it's important to remember that. Um, experience, right? So talk about exposure. Uh, one thing is that we in the society of immediate gratification and feeling like, you know, I'm just like, I got clout. I don't have to do certain things. I'm too big for this. I'm too big for that. And working for free was the most humbling experience to me. And that's how I got the most experience. Um, my first film was Remember the Titans. And I remember the guy said, just keep calling until she picks up and tell her I told you to call. And that's what I did. I went in there not knowing anything about film, nothing, zero. And I worked for free maybe like two or three weeks. But again, they saw something in me. And you show up ready to work. You show up with 150%. And then also trusting the process. Like understanding that things take time. And it's not going to be immediate. And fighting for what I believe also helped me. Like I believe in equality for education. I believe in literacy for all. I believe that black girls have power. You know, but also having the faith of a mustard seed. And that meant that sometimes... Again, walking to that movie set confidently, not knowing anything, but still knowing that I had a right to be there and I was open to learn is how I became, you know, I got awards. I've been producing now for over 15 years, but it took me believing in myself, having faith in my ability 
and then trusting the process and also find those you could trust like why well, i didn't have a mentor in film and video i had a mentor in organization i had a mentor in um in leadership like those things help all those things compounded upon each other and that built the experience for me so some of my experiences were working for free or working for little nothing or also bartering services like know what you're worth so you can offer say hey i can do x you can do y let's trade um but building that experience helps you you know and also again it, it gives you the clout you know you are you're all we're all working to that level right to be in the space um our oprah uh, our Oprah space um so one thing i love to talk about uh when i talk about how um, i've grown um and making mistakes um it, it's, it gives you a chance to grow and um in growing i also want the young people around me to grow and so I give them opportunities upon opportunities upon opportunities. And so one thing I'm really proud of is that I will pass along an experience for a young person and remove myself because I, I've done a lot already. So the pictures you see are just a, a snapshot, a very small snapshot of the amazing opportunities young women have gotten um, through either my affiliation, my association, or a direct link to somebody that I know. Um, meeting Misty Copeland before she was a household name and nobody who she was and she is an amazing spirit um so kind and gentle um so that o'brien if you don't know who she is um she's a reporter she has a she does different shows now but she's a lead she was a lead anchor for a long time but what solo that did we were a very small team magazine and we were, the black girls rocked in the second or third year it was a long line of media we were at the very end she literally stopped and talked to every last person and I was like so um, amazed and res I respect her now for that reason. Like she's, she said, I'm a journalist. I know how it was when you were a small publication, a small channel and the stars walked right past you because you didn't have the clout, but she respected the fact that we were out there and she came and talked to every last person, stopped, took a picture, gave us an autograph. And th that small piece for her name is Rachel, the young lady you see right there. Now she's to federal college and she's, um, those amazing things but that small piece right that small um opportunity to be in a space um the young lady next to her in the swing naima she's our cover girl for a magazine love girls with a sewing workshop again just really pouring into young people and giving them opportunities and it does require some organization right you just can't show up and say, okay let's do this so the organization part says that if, when you're organized and you're thoughtful and intentional you can make anything happen and so um, the last little picture down here at the bottom is Cameron. We went to um, a screening of a, I forgot the TV show now, but it was not Lathan. Um, it was also, uh, it was on Fox with uh, Gina Bryce, Prince Black with her husband. But anyway, so we went to the screening and I said, hey, won't you come with me? You know, and I was able to get a press pass for her. She had a great time. You see her smiling, she took pictures. And I was like pushing, like, go get in front, get in front. Um, so again, giving her that chance to be around all these people learning, like, what does this even mean? What does a press junket look like? What does a screening look like? What does a premiere look like? And while, and now she's a film, a junior at Syracuse University in film, working on her senior thesis. So again, these small things you plant in young people, just giving them a, a chance to see something. Um, and you don't know where it's going to take them. All right. Um, and up next is doo -doo -doo, drum roll, you, um, unique in umbrella. And you was also a tough letter in thinking about what I wanted to talk about. But I also wanted to say, you know, I'm one of a kind. You know, we're all like this black girl magic space, the only one unlike anything else. That's what unique means, unlike anything else. And each of us are unique. Each of us has a story. Each of us has a, a, a journey in life that is just for you and nobody else. And so it's really important when you think about clout and how you're going to be a creative educator, creative innovator, that it is your journey. And you're going to craft it and make it amazing just because you are who you are. And this is an awesome picture. It was a sewing workshop we did. And I love every last one of these young ladies and women because they came. We had a great time. And they all did something different. Like you could choose what you wanted to do because why they're like no one else. We're all unique and special. And it's important to remember that when you're building your own space and creating whatever journey you're doing, that this is your journey. 
and somebody over there is doing whatever they're doing they're doing what they're doing but you are doing what you're supposed to do and don't forget the model or copy or be like anybody else because you're the only one that is you um umbrella so first i was like umbrella is like a pla the definition is like a plastic covering that's made too I'm like nah that's not what i'm looking for and then the next line said a protecting force or influence i was like now that's what i'm looking for may the force be with you my family my students and my passions i am here to influence and protect and give them what they need to be a force to be an influence so when you think about umbrella yes it's a it's a device you use when it's raining outside or snowing to protect yourself from the elements but it's also a protecting a protecting force or influence for what you want to do right or for where you want to be or who you care about so you think about those um they call it the um when birds if you touch one of their 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 um, babies they won't mess with them anymore it's like there's no more protecting force around them so again, understand that I'm the umbrella for my family, my students, and my passions. Like, don't come for them because you're coming for me too. So I am that umbrella. And so I say, may the force be with you. May you understand your force and your influence in protecting those and things that you care about. And clout is also about knowing what those things are and helping those around you understand these are important to me. If they're not important to you, then maybe we're not supposed to be in the same space. But also, if you know that this person is important to me, you're going to treat them the same care and respect you give me. So it's really important when thinking about that umbrella, like that, that protecting force or influence, like who's protecting your influence? Who's protecting you also? So umbrella is also about who are you protecting, but who's protecting you? Because we all need we all need an umbrella in our life. So make sure you figure out who's that umbrella for you. And then um, Lovey said that, you know, being kind is no being nice is telling me it's raining being kind is giving me an umbrella so i don't get wet so just keep that in mind you take that how you want to but i, I love that quote all right also women are the real architects of society um i'm a woman and i support all women all colors but primarily my little my black and brown babies but Cher said this statement this quote and i really liked it because i think sometimes we forget how strong women are and not strong say yes we can we can create life because that's a big thing I, i've done it it's, it's something to, to be congratulated about but also we carry so much beyond just that you know we're supporters we're nurturers you they come to us for most things so we are creating so much of what's happening today even though sometimes we don't always get credit so understand that women are the real architects of this society and even though men will stand around and act like they do everything they don't all right um <laughs> The last one is T is for time and tenacity. Ooh, time, 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 time keeps on ticking, ticking, ticking. So again, like I said earlier, I'm 45. Um, I love being 45, excited about being 45. Um, but I was younger, you know, I was a different child. I was the, the one out there doing everything. Um, I was determined, oh, uh, though the two probably the, the, the the biggest words to describe me growing up i'm one of seven i'm the middle child 250 percent all the way through if you don't know what that means look it up but I'm, I'm i'm a typical middle child at 12 i stopped eating meat now i'm from georgia you know we eat everything from the roots of the tutor and at 12 i make a declaration to my family that i'm not gonna eat meat anymore they're like okay so this is, okay this is this is interesting you know but again you have to know who you are you know, and I still don't eat meat, you know, and when I say meat, I'm more like no pork, no beef. I do eat chicken and fish. But again, knowing who you are and then it sometimes, you know, at 12, 15, 50. Um, but again, I, I own that. Right. I also, just tell you a few quick stories um, about this time and tenacity. Right. It's more, this is more about tenacity right now. Um, I wrote my local paper. And I wrote an article at the time, if you can believe this, smoking was allowed in schools. Like teachers could smoke in school. Exactly. And I was reading an article on research on health, and I was like, but smoking's bad for you. Should they be like, can you drink in school? And so I wrote this article about smoking in school. And my principal called me to the office and was like, yeah, um, 
I don't know sure why you wrote that, um, but you know, want to make sure you don't. We we can like maybe review your articles ahead of time. I'm like, no. <laughs> and so it was this really interesting like back and forth with him over the next like six months to a year because I wrote for my paper for like a year, two years, and he wanted like censorship over my articles. And I was a prolific writer. I had like ten articles in one year. Um, and one was about us not having a prom king. Nobody um, put in or you know apply for it or nominate anybody. And he was like, "Why'd you put that?" So we spent a whole year going back and forth on like him trying to censor me. And I'm like, "Nope, not gonna happen." So again, you know, a little tenacious right there with him. But I'm like, I own that space. That this is my voice, and you cannot have control over my voice. I'm um, also thinking of diversity and adversity. Um, I'm from Georgia. I mentioned Macon small town about an hour and a half outside of Atlanta and when I was in the ninth grade I remember sitting at an FBLA conference and they were having the officers come up and they were doing all this speaking and this big like the, the, the screens are popping their picture going up there and they're talking and I'm like wow and I told my advisor Linda Little I said I'm gonna be on that stage before I graduate ninth grade and she said okay um, and for the next two, three years, I went through like, what does it take to be a region vice president? What do you have to do? Um, I competed. And so my junior year, I ran for region five vice president. And you don't know until you get to the conference who you're running against. I had a campaign manager, my cousin, I had flyers, my mentor, me my speech. I was ready. You know, I, I didn't know who I was up against, but I knew whoever it was. I was I was gonna get I was gonna win. I wanted to win. So we get to the conference and I'm late. No, no conversation. I get in there and I'm a lot of all the other nominees. And we get to our region meeting and I find out I'm the only one running. I'm running unopposed. So I'm gonna win. Like, oh my God. I'm like so excited. And do you know that the white people got mad? This is the first time I said I ever had racism hit me in the face. Because I, before that, I just truly believe if you do what you're supposed to do, you show up ready and prepared, you're going to be okay. They're going to respect you and like you and see you're there and you're smart and you can get the job done. Negative. So they find out I'm the only one running. They started to, they tried to have a petition to write in somebody to go against me so I could not win. And thank God for Jeff Chandler. He was the state president. And he was like, no, this is how it's always been done. If you didn't want to run before now, you can't. He, he shut it down. And I just remember feeling so, um, when I was shocked, because they said this to my face. Like, they were not, like, covert at all. They were very overt in their disgust that this little black girl was about to be region five vice president. And he was just amazingly strong and would not back down. He was like, this is not how this happens. Like she applied, <laughs> she was approved and what, however it works out, then that's how it works out. But you're not gonna write in somebody. And I remember the night before, cause I still get my campaign, you still had to go through the motions, right? Get my campaign speech, people had to vote. Um, but it was really um, hurtful. You know, I'm like 16, 17 and really excited. I love this organization. I've been to every state conference. I placed one year. I've been to the region conferences and I'm just really hurt that this organization I thought would, uh, you know, embrace me. Um, and of course it wasn't a whole organization, but it, it put, it put, it put something in my spirit, right? It, it put a blemish on how I saw racism, how I saw, you know, white people and even how people can look at you and say, Oh yeah, great. You you're awesome. And not believe it. Um, and so that has stayed with me. But that one, that one space and time showed me that you really, no matter how much you show up, no matter what you do, some people will be, do believe what they want to believe. So your my space and time is spent on building up myself for what I want, right? For what I want to do, and not really thinking about what others are going to think. And that's really important when you talk about clout, and when you get clout and you're in a space of clout, like that type of leadership, that type of ownership. And that type of tenacity is going to keep you at the level of how you want to be. Um, so moving on from that, 
you know, life happens, things happen. It was a great conference. Oh, so I, I won. And um, after that, I forgot about what happened. I, I enjoyed this year of leadership. I learned so much. I was able, now we had, I want to say 46 schools in my area. Only three invited me because typically you invite the vice president to come in for your induction ceremony to speak. I got three invitations, no problem. And we host the regional conference. As a VP, you host the regional conference. And what was funny, you have to come to the regional conference to get the state. So even though I couldn't speak at their schools, they had to come to me to get the state. And state is a big deal. And so I remember we had our conference. It was so organized. Linda Little and the team at Northeast Conference of High School in Macon, Georgia, by far an amazing set of individuals. It was flawless. And the look on their faces when they recognized like wow this is really nice like they were they were they even said this is really nice like they came to myself miss miss little over and over again and they never apologized for what happened you know but they definitely i could see that they were thinking like wow we really underestimated you know what this young lady could do because it was it was it was great so moving on um when i talk about time and tenacity right also giving yourself time to grow, giving yourself time to figure things out. I changed majors three times. I changed schools. I moved four times in one year. Um, and for about three months at a three hour round trip commute for school, this is undergrad, this is all undergrad. This all happened between when I came out of school in 94 and I graduated in 98, all this happened, right? So having the spirit of I'm going to finish, uh, you know, time of course was ticking but I was really committed to the process. And so you have to be committed as well. Um, and understand, don't let time use you, you use time. And sometimes, you know, we all get, I know I get Instagram or social media, I get into, I, I wake up two hours later. So it's important to set time and to put those things that are important to you in the front of your brain, write it down so you can remember. Cause again, time is gonna move whether you decide to or not. And so one thing I talk about with time is when Barack won the first time and I remember I was at my friend Latoya's house and he won, was so excited. And I said, I want to go to the White House. Like I want to go to the White House when Barack and Michelle are in the White House. Cause like, that's the thing, right? You know? And I said very clearly, I don't want to tour. Like I don't want to tour the White House, like with a whole bunch of strangers. I want to be invited to the White House. And I said it and I said it. And in 2016, I was invited to the White House. Um, I was school counselor of the year for DC and Michelle Obama was the head counselor in charge and she hosted I think four years at the White House um, and got a chance to meet her, shake her hand and if you were ever, if you saw what, if you were around in 2016, I was literally in the picture like right behind her so we were like, you know, I cropped the photo, it's in my little photo book and it's me and her because it was just me and her um, but that was on my list, you know, and I kept thinking to myself well, they're going to be out soon. Like, what am I going to do? But I kept putting it out there and, and I was able to, to do that. So I think don't limit yourself. If you want to do something, put it out there. Talk about it. Research it. See how you can make that happen. Because when I tell you they were like, yeah, school counselors are going to the White House. I was like, hmm, okay. And so I still have my little card they sent us. I got a picture with my mother. Um, who I took with me. So time can force you to begin to think creatively and figure out how to put things in place and organize your life so that things can happen. And then time can also um, be wasted on some things because sometimes we just stop. Sometimes you got to stop and relax. So don't let time use you. Find ways to use time and be thoughtful in how you, you use your time. Okay? I just want to show you. I was very proud of my, my pink dress moment with Michelle Obama. Um, and then tenacity. Like, I remember call, someone called me tenacious when I, so I do, I did theater for a while. And uh, I love For Color Girls. Um, it's for Color Girls Who Consider Suicide When the Rainbow um, Is Enough um, by Ntozaki Shanga. And it's a, it's a charl poem. And I remember I did it with um, Jasmine Guy. And I was able to get her, it was her directorial debut for theater. And um, one of my silent investors, producers, I wouldn't let her say no. And she's like, you're so tenacious. You know, you're t and that's why she wound up 
supporting us financially because of my tenacity. And I was like, I didn't know what tenacity was, but it's like, it sounded okay. But now, no, I looked it up at that point and I knew what it was. But when she first said it, I was like, what does that even mean in my head? And so I give you the, the, the Webster definition of tenacity, um, the quality or effect of being very determined, determination, the quality or effect of continuing to exist to per persistence. And so this is my last letter. I leave you with that. Like your determination, your persistence will measure your clout. Like that's how your clout is determined. Like how determined are you? How persistent are you? And persistence also breeds, consistency breeds consistency consistency breeds persistence so you have to be consistent right you continue to follow up you continue to do the things you need to do um now we can get car off track right because i'm on this weight loss journey i'm off track right now i'm getting back on but i'm gonna i'm gonna get there i'm determined to get there right so your your clout is based on that last letter is time and tenacity how much time are you going to give to yourself to do what you need to do how much time are you going to how will you let how will you use time for your benefit right but also being determined and persistent in what you want to get done and i think all that helps you you know come to um you get the clout that you want the clout that you deserve um and then it, it won't all happen at one time it's a process and a progress like myself like you know i went from you know um wanting to be an accountant because i love math but realizing that ain't math to get my degree in education, teaching, you know, I was actually teaching school, started doing PR marketing on the side, went to grad school, got to film a video work, and then spent three, four years just doing that. Had a whole degree in education and school counseling, and my parents kept saying, so why did we help you pay for grad school? Um, but I always knew I have a backup plan. I was, I'm still a certified teacher. I'm a certified counselor. Like those things are important. Again, you have to build the opportunities or being organized. No, I got to renew every year. Like I don't let that lapse. You know, that's something I make sure I keep up to date because whenever something doesn't happen, I can be a teacher. I can be a counselor. I'm still a counselor. So again, I leave you with, you know, clout. It's all about clout. You got creative and character. You have love and leadership. You have opportunity organization. And then you have unique an umbrella and time and tenacity. And so again, I am Carletta S. Hurt. I'm honored to share with you a little bit about me and my story and my journey. Let's stay in touch. Um, my email address, you can find me socially. Twitter and IG is Carletta Hurt. Um, Twitter and IG for my company, ITL Programs. And those are my two websites. I must give a short plug for my documentary film, Clothed Minds, about black girls in DC schools and dress codes and how to negatively impact them. It's not about what they wear. It's about targeting and policing black girls' bodies. So please check it out. Um, again, I appreciate the time to see here with you. I look forward to your questions at the end. Um, and that is, that's it. That's it for me. Thanks for your time. And... Wow. Um, that was remarkable. Thank you for sharing all that great information. Um, I had to take some notes and uh, you definitely inspired me to actually do even better. Um, I'm in the mentor, uh, mentorship uh, space, so I definitely want to do better in that space because uh, you definitely inspired me. Yes, uh, that was that was a uh, great. And uh, I just have a few questions to uh, follow up, if you will. <laughs> So uh, first, I just want to ask you, uh, well, you pretty much summed it up in your uh, and when you were talking about Mississippi, I mean, uh, coming from Georgia, I'm from Mississippi, so I kind of know all about that. But uh, one of the questions is, have you ever been marginalized by others? And if so, in what way? Oh, my God. Age isn't with the first thing. Um, I remember vividly interviewing for a job and they like, we really like it told me to my face. Oh, we really like you, but you're too young to pay you this much money. We have to look at our salary requirements. I was like, what? Like, it to my face. And they didn't pay me what it was advertised. Um, but I had an amazing supervisor. She took the, she asked them, could they give it to her? And she gave it to me. And so I was really surprised. One, they could just say that to you and like not get in trouble. But two, I was really um, appreciative of her recognizing um, that 
she could get the money and she just gave it to me. And I, I really, to this day, respect her so much for that. Um, and then also, when you come from Georgia or when you, I live in D.C. And they claim D.C. is the South, but it's not. Um, and they make assumptions because I think I was um, working at a school in North Fulton, which is in Atlanta, like more fluent, you know, high fluent people. And I remember I was talking to somebody. I said, oh, yeah, I went to Oberthorpe. I said, you went to Oberthorpe? I was like, I mean, I'm like, yes. She was so surprised, treated me different from that day forward. Like she had put me in a box because I was from a small town in Georgia and she knew really nothing about me, but her whole, like how she interacted me totally changed. And I was really like, wow, like that's deep. Like you, because I went to Oglethorpe and it's a predominantly white school. It's a small liberal arts school. Now, now I'm smart. Like before, I guess you just dismiss me as being like just some lucky person that got a job in your building. Um, but it, and that's what happens to, um, in a lot of spaces against for each other too, not just against white people. You know, we do it to ourselves. Um, but yeah, the, the I always think about ageism when I was a, a teacher. I was 21, like right out of college. Parents would insult me all the time. Where's the teacher? I'm here to see Miss Hurt. I'm like, uh, that's me. Oh, you're too young. I'm like. Like, this is not a joke. Like, I'm the real teacher. Like, and, and would talk to me. Like, it's like talking to my daughter. She's not a, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking myself, but I'm, I'm your child's teacher. Let's, let's get back to why we're here. Um, but that was, yeah, it was, that was always interesting. And it was a lot of, the, some, not necessarily the black parents, definitely the white parents. They were just like, you're too young. You can't be Rebecca's teacher. I'm like, I'm just hurt. I mean, one, one guy got up and left. And came back with a principal. She was like, "Oh no, this is Miss Hurt." Like I'm thinking, did you just leave? <laughs> like I'm going, I'm going to impersonate a whole teacher in a classroom. I was just like, "This is yeah." So it happened. <laughs> it's like so. Uh, I just want to follow up one question before I go to my other one. Um, I know you were saying that uh, you know women can be strong. Well, uh, well, you uh, are very about uh, women empowerment. You're talking about how strong they are and everything. Now, I saw a meme and it kind of made me think about something. It was like uh, it said, um, "Describe a black woman without saying strength." And I was like, mm. Mm. "It made me think because I was like, it's all these other adjectives that we have, but we always close-minded when we talking about black and brown women." We always just say, oh, yeah, that's a strong black woman. No, I feel like women should be more than just strong. I feel like y'all are eloquent, um, you know, overstanding with understanding the development of this country, being an architect like you uh, uh, announced and everything else like that. So I definitely wanted to just give you a shout out about that and just say, hey, you y'all are just not just strong women. Y'all are more than that. And um, y'all are the glue to uh, our success in this country and to this world. Thank you. Thank you, Rhonda. She just posted something about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the second question is, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your younger self when you started your journey? Ooh, you know what I would tell my younger self is when you got that job that paid you full-time money for part-time work, put your butt down and stay. Do not leave. Like That's what I would tell my younger self. And also, when you saw that man in the parking lot you dated in high school run, do not talk to him. <laughs> like he was not good for you. And but and you were just caught up in like, oh, so anybody listening, if you didn't if they weren't good for you in high school, they're not good for you now. Run. Leave it. Like don't do that. Don't go back. As Mr. Copeland, the Jan said, my middle school said you left for a reason. Remember that when they come back talking about all that. Yes. So two lessons. <laughs> <laughs> But also, but seriously, I would tell my younger self because I am that they say there are three um, when you're faced with something that's fearful or adverse, you have three reactions flight, flight, or freeze. I'm yeah. a flight. I'm out. Pack my bag. No, I'm forgetting the bags. I'm gone. I would tell myself to stay, not freeze, not fight, but stay. Like, stay in that space. Take what you're gonna take it because it's gonna make you a better person. Because I when I tell you something go bad, I'll pack my bath. Like I'm not doing this. You know, I, I would say God didn't mean for being pain like this. They like Carletta, that is not what God meant. But that was like my standard line. He didn't mean for me to be in pain like this. Like 
but you just go leave. Mm-hmm. I mean, gone. Job didn't matter. Relationships didn't matter. I'm out. So I would tell myself <laughs> to stay. Good <laughs> 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 lessons running because I was always what man. They should call me slow though. I'll be out of there. Like no sir, not doing this. <laughs> so um, I noticed. I noticed you were saying that uh, you stopped eating meat. And everything. I'm vegan. I'm from Mississippi, so I kind of know how that is, and uh, especially being yeah. teased by family members and all that. Especially coming from you know that that uh, that, that Bible Belt. Everything. It's a meat. It's meat eater. So, you know, how did you kind of overcome that? You know what's so funny? I was um, I read a lot when I was younger. I don't know. I was like this goofy kid, but I I love reading, and I rem- and I remember reading two books by accident about how they torture animals for food. And it, it I was obsessed, you know, and my friend was like, what is wrong with her? And I remember I first told them, my father was like, whatever, like nobody, they ignored me. They literally were like, okay, Carlotta. And then I stopped eating. Like I call myself, don't do this, anybody listen. I'm, I'm just not going to eat. So I remember waking up and being so weak. I had to crawl to the kitchen for a box of crackers. I was just like, don't ever do this again. And so my mother, um, being being a mother, was like, well, I'll buy you some stuff. My dad was like, don't buy her nothing special. She go eat what we eat. I don't know what she thinks. She, it was like this whole struggle at first. Um, and so I was constantly, you know, having to watch what they did with the food because they weren't being, they weren't trying to support. Um, and I remember I got really sick. Um, because I just wouldn't get enough nutrients. Like my body, I'm, I'm growing. I'm like 12. Like my body is going through a lot. Like I got really, really sick. And the doctor was like, either you start eating something or you are going to put you in the hospital. Like this is not, you know, your health is really important. And I think my, my parents also were like, okay, let's, let's meet her halfway. You know, it was a wake up call for all of us. Like, you know, um, because it's a picture of me. Um, I couldn't find it, but I we had went out a family trip. And I could not keep up. Like I, it was I was like so fatigued, and that was like okay, like what's happening, what's going on, and that's what it was. I just wasn't getting enough nutrients, and so um, I say, you know, a gift and a curse of getting sick was that my family was like, okay, let's how can we meet her halfway? How can we, you know, pro- provide some support without doing too much? Because at some point, you know, she clearly isn't going to stop. It was like one of those defiant, <laughs> you know, who's going to win? And I was like, I don't want to die. But at the same time, <laughs> I was a kid. I didn't have my own money. Um, but in the end, I think, you know, even like now, um, I was doing no meat at all at first, like nothing. And then when I got sick, I had to start eating, I think, fish. And that was like my also my escape. I could say, well, can we go buy Captain D's? Can we go get like them? And I also learned to cook. At four, and I, I don't like to cook now. But it forced me to learn how to cook also because I was able to make things for myself. So overcoming that was a matter of just being um, consistent with my family. And when I got to school, it was I got um, it was not easier per se, but I could talk to the cafeteria people. Come small town, you know, you know everybody there, and you. Um, but overcoming that was really about just continuing to read, and I and I really believed in it. You know, I was like, this is not. We should think about how we treat you know animals and how they're processed for our consumption. Um, so a lot of it was just like when I got sick, it was just one of those things where we just had to all stop and say, okay, how can we do something different? Cause this ain't working. <laughs> okay. That's uh, I can, I can, I can, under- I can attest to that. I understand, uh, completely. So, um, I'm just wrapping up just a couple more questions. Uh, secondly, well, yeah, this will be, uh, what would you like to leave with us from your presentation today? Um, get your own acronym for clout like found find the clout that that matters to you and what you're doing um also listen to black girls i cannot say that enough um i'm a big supporter of them and black girls are going to become black women so listen to black women you know what i'm saying like that's what's important so make sure that you're listening and don't listen to respond but listen to understand listen to be empathetic listen to be compassionate um because their voices matter and if you recognize that this black woman in front of you was a black girl at one point, and when people didn't listen to me, bad things happened. I got sick, you know. So it's it's not something 
that I take lightly when I say listen to black girls. I'm really being intentional when I say that. Like even if you, if your cousin, your niece, um, somebody at your church or wherever you worship, like just take time to listen. And that might just be a random conversation to hear what she has to say. Like, how are you doing? And really mean that. And like, don't unpack that. So what have you been doing? How do you treat yourself nice? Like, what do you enjoy? Because we sometimes don't do that. And that's what's really important. Wow. That was very impactful. Thank you for that. Um, I would take that with me and, uh, you know, really uh, write down some notes about that so I can uh, better myself. <laughs> Auntie. Hey, 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 Carletta. Now let me ask you: Is this person to music? Is that a family member? A wake up call for the entire family? Somebody's on YouTube called to music. Oh, I don't know who that is. Oh, okay, all right, okay. I don't know. Okay, I thought maybe that was a family member saying, "Yeah, that was a wake up call for all of us." Okay, <laughs> all right. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Um, so much. Okay. Thank you. Car I love this. Let me tell you, you have to come back. I'm going to tell you what you have to do. I don't ever tell people what they have to do, but I'm going to tell you. Okay. So listen to this black woman. Okay. I, I will. Right. Hey, now, thank you. All right. So you need to come back with some clips. You, you edit your stuff, right? Or somebody else edit for you. Somebody you edit is. your stuff. Somebody edit for you. You need to come back with some clips from the documentary. Okay. Right, and we will promote it. Right, so we will promote that we're going to um, we're going to do a viewing. Yay! Yeah, we'll do a viewing. Right, of some some clips. Yeah, and then maybe in between each clip, you'll talk about some of the stuff, or maybe oh, right. Yeah, okay. right. Yes. Yeah. So we can do maybe like three to, three to five clips, and and some commentary. I like that. Yep. Thank um. You. Yeah, so I don't never tell people what to do, but I, I this we need to see. Right? Hey, she said it. She spoke it in existence. She said yeah, listen to, to black it. women. So yeah, <laughs> so that we'll do. And then let me tell you this. This is funny. So I've been to Macon. So huh? To the Mac Downs, we call it for short. The oh, that's what they call it. Okay, now I didn't know that. So you know, I'm a New Yorker. Right. I happen to be living in in Maryland, but I'm a New Yorker. I lived in Georgia uh, for five years. And at the point I was living in Georgia in Atlanta, of course, you know, we <laughs> live when you move to Georgia. You don't move to Macon. You don't move to Columbus. You don't move to no Bibb County. Right. You move to Atlanta. OK. Atlanta Metro. All right. I'm living in Cobb County, you know. And I was working for a real estate advisory firm. And part of what we were doing was if you had, this is a real estate boom. You know, I'm a little older than you, Carletta. So not much, two years. Okay, not much. Um, but this is the real estate boom. And you know what was going on in Georgia at that time. And so if, if you had a piece of property, you had a piece of land, you would come to us and we would tell you the highest and best use. We would do all the comps. We'd tell you what to develop there, whether it was commercial or, real, or uh, residential. And so my client happened to be in Macon and they said he's not going to come out of Macon I need to go down there and so I didn't know any better uh because I mean I done went to Texas for clients Cleveland right we're everywhere for clients but now this this one is in Macon and so one of my co-workers a white gentleman is like I'll come with you I'll come with you know like so we, we leave out in the morning and we are meeting at this country club Yes, there's a country. There's a very exclusive country club that was probably there during slavery, right? Or 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 shortly thereafter slavery, right? And I kid you not, um, Daryl, you probably don't know this because you're young. You might know Carletta. So there was a movie in the that had to be the '80s with the Fat Boys called The Disorderlies, and yes, it, yes. It, and in the movie, there's this country club and it's stately and it looks, you know, there are all these steps to go up it in the front. And that's exactly what this place looks like. A place that I probably shouldn't be, right? Thank God my white co he knew. colleague, he knew. he knew, yeah, I didn't know. Where we going now? You know, fine. So now we get there, we get up in there and there's a long hall. It's beautiful. It's like wooden walls, you know how like, 
it's beautiful. Like these huge, like literally this, the hallways probably could have fit like a queen size bed in the hallways, right? Like just, just huge. Well, on the walls are like these pictures of these all white men, right? There are no black people on the wall, but like, you know, and I don't know who they were. They were members from the years gone, but I could sound like olden days to current. And then we get into a, um, this is a true story. We get into a, you know, a room where you're going to eat <clears throat> a, 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 um, a sort of a dining room area. Yeah, but it was, it had, when we were dining, it was only us. That's why it was just, it was whoever my client was, was someone. So I'm there, it's my client <clears throat> uh, who, who didn't leave Columbus because he was a very older, he was an old man. His two sons are there who are pushing for the project that we're working on, but they can't do anything without daddy's approval. And the way the all black staff served me, I knew that I probably wasn't the first, but I was probably one of 10 black people in that place. <laughs> That How you the, described it made me think working. I was watching Love uh, Lovecraft Country. Yeah, it was. It was. It, <laughs> I was one of the few. Uh, it was. Yeah, and even the the father looked at me interestingly. Let's just say the whole time. Um, you no, know she was black. Yeah, like he was, he was, he was definitely an older, older man, like all white hair, older, older man, you know, the patriarch of that family. But it was just funny. So that's my experience with Macon. Uh, and thank God we never had to go back down. I never had to go back down. The actual property was outside of Atlanta, but, but we needed to see the client. You know, they had this property outside of Atlanta. Anyway, so that was my experience with Macon. So, whew, and that was interesting. So that was an interesting ride back to the Georgia, the Atlanta metro area. Did y'all talk about it at all? Did y'all talk about what happened in the car? Did y'all even? We laughed. We laughed. Um, there were a couple of instances where there were there was like uncomfortable silence uh, during during the um, lunch because I needed to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you could imagine that after I talk and I'm showing them. You know, everybody had a presentation, we had my presentation. This is, you know, we're not doing a PowerPoint. This is when we actually put together a whole presentation. I'm like, okay, you know, this is time for you to go to page eight. And, you know, I'm asking, are there any questions? They asked me no questions. Hmm. They asked me no questions. So there were these times where there was like un real, real uncomfortable silence. And so coming back, we laughed at a couple of things. That was, you know... It, and then I remember going to my dad saying, if you believe, could you believe where I went today, daddy? Like, you know, my father had been living in um, <clears throat> in the Atlanta metro area since the early 80s. He, um, but that was just like, whew, yeah, that was an experience. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I know Macon, that's what I know of Macon. Um, I wish I remember the name of the family and I wish I had um, remembered the name of that country club, but it was, that that day, that family had the country club. So it was just that family in there. Huge, yeah. So they were. That's how rich they were. Um, so yes, I know a little about making. Uh <laughs> but also, I mean, making is making is making. But Otis Redding, Little Richard, and Lena Horn, you know, mm -hmm. have been making. So mm -hmm. if you never go to making, you know, listen, the Harriet Tubman Museum, Harriet Tubman Museum. Is an amazing place to go to to learn about the history of Macon in Georgia. Right um, for some summers. All right now, yeah. They try. So yeah. So yeah. I, little my little city self, my you know New York City girl, learned a little something that day. Um, it's and it's interesting to be in a situation where you're asking someone a question and they just look at you and do not respond, and so you just. <laughs> that had never happened to me before. Um, yeah, you just move along and you realize that you should stop eating and get up and you guys should leave. And, and we we finished, but we left. But anyway, it was interesting. And that was in, that was the year I bought my house. That was 2004. So that was not you know, oh, well. decades ago. That was 2004. Yeah, that was, that was 2004. Yeah. Um, so yes, but yes, I love this and I cannot wait for you to come on back. 
Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for, for being here with us this evening. Thank you all for staying on with us as I gave that long drawn out story, but it's, it's one for the history books. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's one for the history books. Um, and Carletta oh. will be back. She'll be yeah. back uh, debuting, uh, well, giving us, not debuting, giving us some clips. What's the name of the documentary, Carletta? It's about clothed minds. Um, your, what you wear should not dictate the level of your education. So it just talks about, you know, dress codes. And if you ever Sound had- Sound like any, Erica Badu. What? No, uh, I remember Erica Badu had a quote about like, uh, you know, you can be woke and your hair, you know, be perm mm -hmm. or whatever like that. So yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's, um, yeah. yeah. It's called Clothes Minds. Um, I, I can't wait to come back and shit. I'm really proud of it. So immensely proud of it. We're working on a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, I'd love to come back and share it and get some input and thoughts. So it could be a, a, a very a robust dialogue because some parts of, again, it's not just about clothes, it's about policing girls' bodies, yeah. you know, control. There's a lot of underlying issues there. So, all right. Yeah. All right. So, you let me know when you're ready to do it and we'll do it. Uh, all right, CDPD crew. If you found, thank you, Mr. Arnold, for hosting this thank evening. You, I appreciate, appreciate you. you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if you're viewing and you guys are still here, and I thank you for staying on. If you are viewing or you catch this on the replay and you found value in Carletta Hurt's part presentation, any part of it, uh, all you need to do is just share it. Share it on your social media. You don't have to tag anybody. Just share it. Okay. Um, and as always, I thank you all for coming out. God bless you and good night. Mm.